Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're brand new. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to shade or at least how I shade in Abyss Paint X. This is a pretty surefire way to shade, especially the dark shading part, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do my own sort of unique style of light shading, but I'll be showing you what I know and what I know how to do. Firstly, of course, you're going to want to tap the thing that you're going to shade. So I'm just going to grab a couple of random colors and make them into little shapes. So here's a couple of colors and I'm going to be showing you how I do the light shading and dark shading when I'm drawing. First, a sort of important thing to think about, which I don't always think about in Venus, is where the light is coming from. The light source is a really important part of shading. For example, if the light is coming from up here, then this part will be the lightest area and this part will be the darkest area. But it all depends on direction because sometimes the light could be going directly to this spot and then the, all the outer parts would be darker. Or if the light was coming from here, then by here would be the lightest and here would be the darkest. Even though it's normal to have light coming from here, or from here, or from here, I totally recommend doing in different directions because it can really make your drawing look pretty funky. I'll be showing a few different directions in this video. With this yellow, we'll be having the light come from here. With this blue, we'll have the light come from the bottom. And with the pink, we'll have the light go right onto the center. So I'll just put a little white dot there. I've put all these arrows and things on a separate layer so that they don't get in the way with my shading. When I'm shading, I will usually make a new layer for each type of shade. For example, one layer for dark shading and one layer for light shading. On this layer, I will use the magic wand. I always make sure that the expansion is up by at least one pixel because otherwise it makes the drawing look clunky. Then I will select the area that I want to shade. Then it's time to actually start shading. So with this one, because we know the light comes from the bottom, we're going to get the dark parts to go all the way around by here. For our dark shading, I will generally use the multiplier layer which is when you go into the layer settings here, change it from normal to multiply. I then usually lower the opacity a bit, and for multiply I'll usually use a light purple like this, but it's good to change the color around depending on what you want to do. Experiment a bit. Up here is the dark part, so I'm going to start shading here, and you'll see because of the multiply layer function it works out as dark shading immediately and gives it the sort of warm feel because of the color we used. It doesn't always look perfect first time around, and I'm not aiming for perfection here either, I'm just trying to show you all what I would usually do. If you want to do simple cell shading, then that is definitely the way to go. I sometimes blur it at the ends though, just to give it a nice, soft effect. Blurring it also tends to blend it in a lot more, although it will never be blended in quite perfectly, especially if you're trying to shade. Now I'll make a new layer for doing the light part of the shading, which I usually have on the setting Add or Screen, but usually Add. To shade something on Add, I will just get the same colour of the thing that I'm shading when it's in a flat colour, and use the Add on the light area. Fiddle around a bit and maybe lower the opacity, because if you have the opacity super high, then it will just look like a white. This is nicer. So we go like this and then blur it out because blurring always tends to blend things well. If you don't want to blur and you prefer to do it without that, then that's completely valid. Adding a bit more add to the closest part of the light source will then blur it out a bit more again. And then sort of keep blurring and maybe adding lighter colours to little parts that you want to be the brightest. For example, I always add a bit of white at the end and then blend it in. This makes it seem like it is the lightest part and where the rest of the light is sort of coming from. This honestly isn't the best one I have done because this is just for tutorial purposes. You can make them look a lot cleaner and you can blend them a lot better for sure. So please don't take this as gospel, I am not a professional, but this is sort of the method I would usually use. Going back onto the dark shading layer, I'm going to be doing this one without blending, and we're going to be using the yellow one. Click the magic wand again, and to do the dark, I will just get the color, I will just get the light purple, 
The thing with this is that it doesn't always work as you can see here. It's a bit harsh, so instead of using the purple, we'll go to a different colour. Going to a colour like red or orange for this sort of yellow usually helps and makes it a lot nicer. As you can see here, it's super harsh if you haven't blended it in, and some colours are generally harsher than others anyway, so changing the colour to what you want it to be can help a lot. For example, making it lighter there just made this a lot nicer. Remember, because the light is coming from up by here, we're going to make down here dark because it's furthest away from the light. And then, going on to the light layer, I'll just get the same yellow we had and plop it up there. This is what it looks like when you haven't blended it in, and to be honest, that's usually what I use because I prefer a non-blended style. Now for the last one, the pink. The light is coming from right from the centre, but because that will mess it up, I'm going to take away the little dot, and we're just going to remember that it's coming from the centre. Let's get the magic wand again and select the area. This is on the multiplier layer again, and we're just going to get that nice purple and sort of go around the edges. As you can see, this is super harsh again. Some people like the harsh style, which is fair enough, and I do too a lot of the time. If you want to make it softer though, again, just change to a different colour more similar to the one that you're using, and just make it lighter. It will still have the effect no matter how light your colour is, except if it's white, because this is the multiply layer. Blending is usually more effective with this one, so I'm going to try and do that. Bear in mind with blending, going on a lower opacity with the brush that you're using is always a good idea, and it helps even out the blend when you're trying to blur. Like so. So you can see the darkest part is on the edges, and to add some more emphasis if you want, you can make it a tiny bit darker and go around the edges again, and then blend those bits in too. If that still isn't enough for you, just sort of keep going until you have the nice balance that you want. I'm going to add a bit more because I enjoy the contrast. And then I'll blend it in some more. Now for the light shading of this part. We know that the light is coming from the centre, so that's all we really need to focus on. Let's get some of the closest of what we can get to the original colour and put some in the middle. Remember to experiment with different opacities, that always tends to help, in my opinion, to get your desired effect. And then I'm going to blur these out, and try and blend them as much as I can. I always put a little bit of white in the centre because it tends to make it emphasise the point where the light is coming from. And then we'll blur that in too. And then there's a lighting done on that one. This one is probably my personal favourite done. I didn't do the best on this one in all honesty, and this one was just kept as cell shading. That is how I shade Nibis paint. I implore you to try different brushes and see what you like the most. This might not even be the method that you'll want to use, but I can give advice on don't use a black airbrush to shade the dark parts. That makes things look bad in general, and unless you're trying to specifically stylize it to make it look black, I wouldn't use black for shading. Thank you very much for watching the video, I hope that you found it helpful, and if you did, maybe consider supporting. Thanks for watching, bye!